Hello everyone, while we're all waiting for the new episode of Glitch, I thought I'd give you some interesting theories about what's going to happen in the next episode that we'll see very soon. Not only will you learn about the sad fate of Kinger or the creepy mystery of Ragatha, but also a lot more about the rest of the characters. I won't take too long, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a like and a comment, and here we go. And to start with, of course, the main character of the pilot episode, Pomni. As we remember, the pilot episode ended with her unsuccessful escape attempt being stopped by Kane, and after Kane brought her back and organized a big dinner, we saw Pomni's desperation and weakness in her eyes and a crazy smile on her face. And episode 2 will certainly continue the story, so let's see what happens. Pomni, of course, will not give up her goal and will continue to try to get out of the digital circus. But as we have already seen, it is almost unrealistic to do it alone, so Pomni will have to look for his partners. As you can understand, Jax and Kinger will not be able to help her. After all, one of them is a crazy old man who has been crazy for a long time and trusting him with anything would be a big mistake. While Jax would be a perfect partner, his character and attitude towards other characters makes us think that if Jax and Pomni were to work together, Pomni would probably go insane instead of getting out of this digital hell. Gangle is a little crybaby who can give up at any moment, and Zubal is very unreliable, so Pomni will realize that the only good option for her is Ragatha. She is the only one of them who is very kind to Pomni, and her mental state is very depressed, but luckily she can control it and knows when to stop to get back to normal. So Pomni was able to negotiate with Ragatha, and the fun began. The friends started to think about how to make it so that Kane wouldn't be able to stop them, and in an ideal situation, wouldn't even know about their escape. At first it seems unrealistic to you, me, Pomni, and Ragatha, because Kane seems to know everything that happens in the circus. But as they say, nothing is impossible. They come up with a plan, but they realize that it's impossible to do it together. So Ragatha decides to go to all the characters' rooms and try to convince them to help them and maybe herself. After a few days, no one agreed to help them, and when they were sad, the other characters came to them and said that they agreed. After that, they started a large-scale preparation. The essence of their operation was to create chaos on the whole territory of the digital circus, because only then Kane would not be able to be everywhere at once, but there was another problem with his fancy wacky watch, which immediately informs him that someone has fallen into the void, which is the exit to the real world. If you think about it, the void is just a way out of the programmed location of the digital circus, which means that if you travel around it for a long time, you can break the system and get out of the digital world. Weeks and possibly months of preparation went by, and then X Day came. Everything started and Kane was flying around the digital circus like a madman trying to fix the violations, and at that moment all the characters found themselves in a secret room, looking for the corridor, with the mysterious door, and when they found it they were sure that this was the last test in their lives. But what happened was impossible to predict. As soon as they opened the door, they did not see the void, but a very angry administrator Kane, who at the same moment teleported everyone back. Actually, Kane found out a long time ago thanks to a character, but we'll get to that later. He just decided to give the players the illusion that they were in complete control of the situation, so that failure would seem even more frustrating. And this is just one of the lines of the new episode, and another equally interesting line of the second episode, which I will tell after the next theory. King or Will Abstraction I know how loud these words are, but let's consider this scenario, because it fascinates me, and I think it fascinates you as well. Even the pilot episode showed us the helplessness and insanity of this chess piece, because it is Kinger who is the closest to becoming an abstracted monster. I think the second episode may show us such a scenario, but I will tell you how it will happen. Remember the mysterious painting on the door that shows a character who has been abstracted for a long time, but everyone was very interested in his fate because he is almost an exact copy of Kinger. Most people agreed that it was his wife. I completely agree with that, because if you look closely, you can see that it is a female character. Well, it is she who will play a key role in turning Kinger into an abstracted monster. Our chess fan is often troubled by thoughts of her, because it is impossible to just forget his greatest love and her disappearance, and was the key factor in such a strong madness Kinger. But from time to time, he manages to forget her, and in those moments, Kinger behaves as a quite adequate character. But as we know, Kinger has been living in the amazing digital circus for about 20 years, which is a very, very long time. And I think he's getting very fed up with Kane and the main creator, which means they have to get rid of him. And so Kane, who has absolute power in the digital circus, decided to make a very clever move and create a digital clone of Queenie. In case you didn't know, Queenie is Kinger's wife. And this clone came to Kinger every night and told her all kinds of horrible things about what happened to her in the circus and what is happening to her now in the basement. Of course, all this was programmed into her, so she did not react to all the words of comfort from her ex-husband. 
And with each passing day, the insanity of the whole situation grew, and with it, Kinger's mental problems progressed. Kane then began to create in Kinger's mind various memories of his past life with his wife in the digital circus, which was the final chord of his story. After all these trials, Kinger could no longer live on the circus grounds, and each day he became more and more like a monster. And since Kinger is an old man, he is rarely visited by anyone, and as in the story of Kaufmo, no one even noticed his absence, because his impregnable fortress still stood in the middle of the circus, and everyone else thought that he was just hiding inside it. And when it came to the end, and Kinger had already become an abstracted monster, Kane quietly moved him to the basement, and no one would ever hear of the poor chess player, or know the terrible story that happened to him. So back to our first theory. Remember I said Kane knew because one of the characters told him, I think you figured out who it was, but the correct answer was Jax. Yes, it was our bully Jax who turned out to be the evil traitor. Now let's get down to business. We all know who Jax is and how he conducts himself in the digital circus. He mocks, humiliates, insults, and makes nasty jokes about the other characters. So Ragatha's idea to bring him into the plan was doomed from the start. The other characters really tried and helped, while Jax and Kane just watched and laughed at the fact that they knew the whole idea was going to fail. But why did the rabbit betray everyone else? It could have been the arrogant Zubal or the crybaby Gangle who was afraid that the whole idea was going to fail and decided to tell Kane everything so that he wouldn't get mad at her. But no. Jack seems like such a cool school bully who only knows how to bully others. But have you considered how much his actions match his inner feelings? Like all such personalities, Jax used to be a nice and likable guy. And even when he first joined the digital circus, he was not the character we saw in the pilot episode. But when he was confronted with the reality of the amazing digital circus, he immediately realized how to behave in order to survive and not go crazy. But Jax realized that he was not satisfied with this arrangement, and so he decided to go to Kane and agree with him on what terms he could safely exist in the digital circus. So Kane says all he has to do is act rude and stop others from enjoying life. And that's when we saw Jax as a bully. He tells Kane all about what goes on in the digital circus, who says what, and so on. Maybe after Jax's stories, some characters became abstracted monsters because their opinion of Kane was not the most pleasant. So let's talk a little bit about Zubal and Gangle. Zubal, as we've already learned, is a very arrogant character. For the sake of simplicity, we'll think of her as a girl. In the pilot episode, we saw very little of her, but we already realized some peculiarities of her character. I think this situation will be repeated in future episodes, because it is unlikely that she will turn into a calm and kind character so quickly. Although it is possible that we will see Zubal realize that there is a horror around her, and that Kane will continue to bully everyone. Then Zubal will believe everything Pomni says and help her. But I think we will see the full climax of this character in the third episode. And the second episode is just a summary of Zubal's story. And Gangle, as in the pilot episode, will again be left aside. Only a small part of the screen time will be dedicated to our poor Gangle, and it will again be scenes of Jax's bullying and constant crying. And I promise to tell you about Ragatha. In short, she has been in the circus for a long time, but almost every day she is bullied by Kane, and why this happens I will tell you in one of the next videos, which will be completely dedicated to Ragatha. Well that's all. I wish you success and good luck and say see you soon in new videos that will appear every two days.